Uh, Anne Applebaum essentially says, if the 20th century was the story of slow, uneven progress toward liberal democracy, the 21st century so far is the story of the reverse. She says, you know, not only what we're going on, what's going on in the United States is a reversal away from democracy, but we should see it as part of a global problem. She identifies in particular that the authoritarian strongman regimes around the world are all helping each other, including, you know, personally supporting other mm -hmm. corrupt leaders in their corruption and helping them evade sanctions and stuff. And it does feel both global and very hard to fight. It feels almost inexorable. And speaking with Ann Applebaum about that, I found myself sort of in a dark place for a few days. And I wanted to put that to you to find out mm -hmm. um, whether you see that through, through, through a lens darkly as well, or whether you're feeling more optimistic about strategy against it. Well, Rachel, um, I, I am very worried, concerned. Uh, I spent a lot of time uh, thinking about exactly what Ann Applebaum and you and others are uh, worried about and trying to point out, uh, because I do think that we are facing uh, a crisis of democracy, a crisis of legitimacy, uh, a crisis that really goes to the heart of what the future of our country and many others around the world will be. So I spend my time trying to figure out um, what we can do about it, and I am uh, not ever going to give up because there's just too much at stake. Uh, but first and foremost, we have to make sure more people, besides people like you, me, Ann Applebaum, and others uh, who uh, share our concerns, uh, see what we see. Uh, because I think that uh, the role of disinformation, the way that propaganda has been really weaponized, uh, and the increasing ability to manipulate people through algorithms and other forms of artificial intelligence will only make this harder uh, to combat. Mm. So I don't want uh, to be um, pessimistic about it because I think this is a worthy and necessary battle. I saw you talking to my two friends, Karen Dunn and Robbie Kaplan. You know, when they took on that case uh, against the neo-Nazis and the white supremacists coming out of Charlottesville, you know, a lot of people were sort of scratching their heads. And I remember talking to both of them, particularly Karen, whom I've known and she's worked for me and I admire her greatly, uh, about why they were doing it. And, you know, it was very simple. Somebody had to do it. We have got to end impunity. We have to hold people accountable for their actions, particularly when those actions threaten our way of life, our rule of law, our future as a democracy. And so I am determined to continue to speak out, to do whatever I can. And in fact, in the book we wrote, State of Terror, as you know, there is a plot against the country by people who truly want to turn the clock back. They believe that the progress we've made on all kinds of civil rights and human rights, um, the cultural changes that have taken place, are so deeply threatening that they want to stage a coup. Now, think about it, because that's truly what is behind Trump and his enablers and those who uh, invaded and attacked our capital. They don't like the world we're living in, and they have that in common with uh, you know, autocratic leaders from uh, Russia to Turkey to Hungary to Brazil and so many other places uh, who are driven by personal power and greed and corruption, uh, but who utilize fears about change uh, to try to get people to hate one another and feel insecure and therefore be easily manipulated by demagogues and by disinformation.